Hey guys, it's Pastor Sarah from Presbyterian Church of the Way. I apologize for the way I'm looking. It's been a busy weekend and um, it's been a hard weekend in a lot of ways. And I know that a lot of you also um, have been um, dealing with some of the really scary things that have been happening in our community um, this weekend and this past week. And so I wanted to share a couple of books with you today um, during our story time that um, really speak to me um, as we think about like how do we um, deal with our feelings at this time and like how do we think about being loving to other people, um, including and especially people who may be different from us in ways. Um, so I shared the first book um, in worship during our children's message on Sunday. So if you didn't have a chance to watch worship with your family or um, if you didn't see the children's message, um, then this will be a new book for you. If you did get a chance, then this is a repeat. Um, but I wanted to share this story because I just think it's a beautiful way of describing how we can love one another. So this is called God's Dream, and it was written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, excuse me, and Douglas Carlton Abrams. And um, it was published by Candlewick Press. And I always like to say at the beginning of my reading that I really appreciate um, all of those who write children's books and publish them and allow people like myself um, to be able to share them during story times with children. Dear child of God, do you dream, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or about being treated like a full person no matter how young you may be. Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it sometimes happens that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a part of God's heart with us. And when we love one another, all the pieces of God's heart are made whole. Isn't that beautiful how that makes all the children together make a heart? God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes even you and me, even if we have different mommies and daddies or live in different faraway lands, even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God, even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller, even if 
your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring. As easy as holding, playing, laughing. As easy as knowing we are one family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. I love that story. Next, I want to share a story with you called A Terrible Thing Happened. It was written by Margaret Holmes and it's published by Imagination Press. Sherman Smith saw the most terrible thing. He was very upset. It really scared Sherman to see such a terrible thing. Sherman did not like feeling so afraid. He did not want to remember what happened. So Sherman decided not to think about the terrible thing he saw. Sherman thought that would make him feel better. At first, the plan seemed to work. Sherman woke up every morning, he brushed his teeth, and he went to school. Sherman played with his friends, he teased his sister, and he walked his dog. Everything seemed all right for a while, but something inside of Sherman was starting to bother him. Sherman had to play more, run faster, and sing louder in order to forget the horrible thing he saw. Other things started happening to Sherman too. Sometimes he did not feel hungry. Sometimes his stomach hurt or his head hurt. Sometimes he felt sad, but he didn't know why. Sometimes he was nervous for no reason at all. Sometimes he did not sleep very well. Sometimes when he did sleep, he had very bad dreams. The bad dreams scared Sherman. All of these things made Sherman angry. It seemed like Sherman was angry all the time. Sherman started getting into trouble at school. Sometimes he felt so angry, he did mean things. Getting into trouble so often made Sherman feel bad. Sherman did not understand all of his bad feelings. He felt confused. Sometimes parents help children figure out their feelings. Sometimes teachers or other grown-ups help. That's how Sherman met Ms. Maple. Ms. Maple helped Sherman think about his feelings. They played while she listened while Sherman talked to her. They played while they talked. Sherman did not feel as mixed up when he talked to Ms. Maple. Once when Sherman and Ms. Maple were coloring, she told him to draw a picture of how he felt when he was angry. This seemed like a strange thing to draw, but Sherman did it. After that, Sherman drew lots of pictures. Pictures of the pain in his stomach pictures of the bad dreams he had, pictures of the fear he felt, and at last, pictures of the terrible thing he saw. Sherman and Ms. Maple talked about the pictures. He asked if the terrible thing he saw was his fault. Sherman said he worried a lot about that. No, Ms. Maple told Sherman. It was not your fault. Sherman told Ms. Maple a lot of things. He told her about the bad dreams. 
He told her how scared he felt. It was all very hard to do. Ms. Maple was proud that Sherman was trying to talk about such hard things. Sherman found that it felt good to let his feelings out. Feeling good helped Sherman feel stronger. When Sherman felt stronger, he did not feel so angry. Nothing can change the terrible thing that Sherman saw, but now he does not feel so mean. He is not so scared or worried. His stomach does not hurt as much and the bad dreams hardly ever happen. Sherman Smith is feeling much better now. He just thought you would want to know. The end. So friends, I wanted to share those stories with you today because I know that a lot of really hard and scary and terrible things have been going on around us um, this last week. And so I just want you to remember that there is help available. If you or family members are struggling right now, you can always ask for help. Um, and, you know, we, Pastor David and I are always here um, to talk to you so you can feel free to call on us, text us, reach out. Um, if you and, or someone in your family is feeling sad or angry or scared or confused. Um, and there are lots of other grown-ups and helpers out there who want to help. Um, so, um, I hope that you have a good week. I know that many of you are finishing up your schoolwork this week, so I hope that goes well for you. And I will look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully very soon. This summer, it sounds like things may be a little different. We're going to try some different things with our Vacation Bible School this summer that I'm super excited about. So you'll be hearing more about that later this week. And um, I look forward to our next time together um, for Kids Club. We had a lot of fun this last week doing show and tell. And we'll be meeting again in a couple of weeks. And on the 14th of June, we're going to have our next movie party. And we're going to do Onward this time. And so that will be from 5 to 6.30, 7 o'clock. Um, so looking forward to that. And I'll be delivering um, door prizes for people who won door prizes. I still have them. Um, so I'll be delivering those this week. I hope you guys are well. I love you all. Know that even though we're not together, you're always in my heart. Take care. Bye.